<laughs> so Tatiana here, and I'm here with Tammy Roman and Jazz Anderson. How are you both doing today? Doing good. Excited to be talking to you. Yes. Excited to be talking to you guys. You guys look very fabulous for a Monday afternoon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. I just had my wig off for two minutes. I was like, oh, let me put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous. You look great. So, Tammy, I want to come to you first. What was kind of... Um, like, how did you get involved with the project doing this Lifetime film, Girl in the Closet? The director, Courtney Miller, uh, is a friend of mine. We worked on a show called Saints and Sinners for Bounce before. And when he got the job as director, he was like, who can I get to play this type of character that could do it justice? You know, and so he called me pitched me on it. I read the script and I definitely thought that it was something that I could sink my teeth into, you know, just coming from an actor, sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, just coming from the standpoint of trying to stretch myself as an actress um, and, and, and really be something outside of myself or something that I typically play. Right. So, once I read the script, I was all in. You were welcome. Welcome to the challenge. <laughs> Ready yeah. to take it on. Because it is like a very heavy hitting, you know what I'm saying? It's not like your usual. It's it's very like tough and you really have to like get through to those layers. So I was watching some of the clips from it. And Jazz, how did you get involved from the movie? How did you get involved with the movie? I mean, I know that's that's your mom, but like were well, you initially interested? Well, yeah. I actually uh, auditioned uh, okay. for the part. Uh, I did a self tape, which my mom helped me with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I never, I've been in a couple other films that were, you know, small films getting my feet wet, but nothing this big. So I was definitely nervous. And then when I got the call that they wanted me to be a part of the project, I was like, okay, now I really have to, to put this work in. So people don't assume kind of like how you just did. Well, your mom's a part of it. So she just, Right. Got it because of that. No, I auditioned and I was like, let me come in here and really prove myself. So that was my my biggest goal when going into it. Yeah. Now, I got to ask you guys, what was it like working together? You know, like, what was it like being on set? Are you guys joking around? Or are you trying to be professional? And or are you, you know, do you have that mother daughter dynamic? What was that like? Well, for me, I was serious from the time I stepped on to <laughs> set to the time I left because I was so nervous. Yes, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think what helped me was our chemistry. Mm -hmm. So even though we had those moments of like, OK, this scene is, is really deep. It's really dark. It was like at the same time in a weird way. I'm like, well, this is my mom. I'm speaking yeah. to my mom. So even though I have to be evil and, you know, Mia's evil as well, our chemistry just made it easier for me. Mm -hmm. So. But no, I wouldn't say we were j j joking a lot, really, <laughs> until yeah, we no. left. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. No. <laughs> we were very mean on set. And that's that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like I, I kept apologizing to people because it's like, you know, I like you, right? You know, that, that whole thing. Because the way I was trained, it's not necessarily method where, you know, method actors for people who don't know, they lock into the character and they're the character from the time they start the movie all the way to they say rap. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm method when I'm on set. Okay. I'm always the character. But the minute they call cut, now it's like, hey y'all, what's up? What's good? You know, I'm back Hello, to being you know. <laughs> so we weren't friendly to each other. We weren't nice to each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with all the people on set, we were always in character on set. And so, I, you know, it was very, it was important to me for me to let Jazz know, you know, I'm your mom. I love you, but I got to be Mia right now. Mm -hmm. And with her, with the other actors she had to interact with, it's like, I got to be Angela right now, mm -hmm. you know? And then there's Remy, of course, who was Patricia, who Patricia wasn't supposed to like either one of us, right. you know? So she was, she was Patricia on set, you know what I mean? And then afterwards it's all like, we love each other, you know? Right. So we just did what we needed to do to get through it. Yeah. 
And I was just about to ask you about Remy. Like, I feel like everybody's a fan of Remy Ma, loves Remy yeah. Ma, and wants to see her doing more projects. So yes. what was it like working with her on this project as well? Well, she was Rem, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, like, um, I know her personally outside of the project. I thought it was a great role for her to play because, you know, Rem can be Rem. You know what I mean? Like, we saw her in Big 50, and that was very close to Remy Ma. This was something where she got to be vulnerable and cry, and, you know, we get to see her interact with a smaller child. Like, when I see her with the golden child, She's a completely different Remy than everybody knows. You know what I mean? Like the golden child runs the family. Okay, yes. let's be clear. You know, and so um, it was just good for the world to see her be that that genuine and, and soft, you yeah. know, and, and just have a role that took her away from being herself. But, you know, we all, you know, it's it's all love, love. You know what I mean? Outside mm -hmm. of the roles we had to play. Yeah, and I, it's so cool that she was able to get the opportunity too, because I feel like we do know her as Rem, but like being yeah. able to get that softer side of her uh, just really like warmed our hearts to the project, to the film. Yeah. Um, Jazz, I want to ask you, do you hope that maybe you and your mom can do more like mother daughter collaborations or do you have any ideas after doing this project of like other projects you would want to do with your mom? Yeah. So, um, and you know, now that I got the jitters out, I'm like, okay, mom, I can see myself working with you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hopefully, you know, hopefully that's in the future for me. You know, my mom's on a lot of projects, ones that I watch and support. So who knows where I'll pop up at. <laughs> Yes, Tammy, you are very booked and busy. Uh, <laughs> and it's so interesting to me, too, because I do know, I mean, the world knows that you've come from this reality television background. But what was that like deciding like, hey, I this is something that I think I actually want to do and I want to make that transition to acting? Would you how smooth you know, it was that was? Yeah, it wasn't difficult to to decide to transition because that's what I was doing before the world saw me rejoin reality TV mm -hmm. with Basketball Wives. Mm -hmm. So literally um, the year before my coming back onto Basketball Wives, I was on a show for CBS called Moonlight. You know, so I had been already doing my scripted programming thing. Um, once I decided to walk away, it's like riding a bike. Like yeah. I was trained by one of the best chip fields in the business. Um, and so I know what to do when it comes to scripted programming. It was just more of getting the casting directors who were young, who weren't familiar with me before I got on to Basketball Wives and all they knew of me was reality TV. Mm -hmm. I had to then prove myself again to them. Okay, But in terms of acting, nah. Nobody <laughs> talked to me about that. Like I take that very seriously. So, you know, that that was easy to 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 just hop back in. Yeah. And I want to ask you too, because you are involved in so many projects. Are there any TV shows or movies that are out right now that you would love to be a part of? And Jazz, you can answer this as well. For me, my dream job is to work for Dick Wolf on any one of the Law and Order or Chicago Med installments. Okay. okay. <laughs> that is, I feel like I need to be Mariska Harvitay's partner. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and then, uh, of course, anything Tyler Perry does, you know, I would love to be Medea's sidekick in a bonnet. You know what I mean? We sitting on the porch just causing havoc all over the place. I, I would love to be able to do that. So those are like my two uh, dream jobs that I am trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could definitely, I mean, I could definitely see both, but the Tyler Perry one, like, oh, my side kick, like, mm -hmm. Ooh, he's got to make that happen. A key, key. <laughs> <laughs> and Jazz, what about you? Um, I guess for me, you know, playing Angela kind of gave me, you know, my my bad girl edge inside. So I would definitely be interested in doing something on BMF. I think that's Ooh, a really dope yeah. show. Um, that's a good love, one. Yeah, BMF or um, Power, like one of those. I love uh, anything 50 Cent really does. So something that just could show me yeah. like an edgy, edgier side. 
I like that. I like that. Okay, okay. And lastly, I just want to say, why do you think it's important for people to see Girl in the Closet on Lifetime? Lifetime, I feel like, is kind of like a staple in our households, <laughs> I like to say. And it's nice to now see more of us on screen on yeah. Lifetime. But why do you think it's important for people to see this film? Well, specifically what you just said, you know, a lot of our community, the African-American community, we've grown up on Lifetime. Like Jazz can tell you, like, I put it on that channel and it yeah. just stayed all day. Yeah. <laughs> but we really see ourselves represented. And so for the first time, you know, Lifetime put together their Girl In Collective and a lot of those stories revolve around the African-American community, but specifically with Girl in the Closet, it's important because people think this is not happening. People think that it can't happen to them. And what Lifetime did so well with this Girl in Collective and specifically the African-American stories mm -hmm. is bringing light to what's happening to our babies, to our sisters, our cousins, our sons, all of that so that we are aware, so that we could be cognizant that this isn't happening outside of our communities, this is happening to us. And although it's dark and Mia is evil and Angela is evil, at the crux of the story, it is something that people need to acknowledge and not continue to sweep things under the rug. These things are happening. We need to know that they're happening, see ourselves represented in those moments so that when we're out on the street, when we interact in our interpersonal you know, dynamics and relationships that we're involved in, we now have a third eye. Mm -hmm. Processing our interaction with people because now it's like, this is not outside of our community. This is within our community. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah absolutely. So that's why it's important for people to see. Yeah. I you mean, sum that up perfectly. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's literally yeah. like art imitates life or life yeah. imitates art. Which one is Correct. it? And this film can bring light to things like that that are going on in the world, like you mentioned. Yeah. So I think that was beautifully said. So. Thank you. Jazz, Tam Tammy, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it, everybody. If you haven't already, make sure you check out Girl in the Closet on Lifetime. And I hope to talk to you guys again. This is really great. Next time, I got to get, we got to get some more time or maybe yes. Yes. something. Yes. <laughs> it was thank lovely so to chat much. with you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye.